Good for most of you, good afternoon. And for some of you uh, attendees, good morning and good evening. My name is Yvonne Osseforth and I'm the operational manager of Global Dairy Farmers. And today I will be your host of this webinar. The webinar is called um, All Round Dairy Webinar. Um, so I'm the operational manager of Global Dairy Farmers. I will later tell you a little bit what this organization, Global Dairy Farmers, is all about. And um, first of all, what I would like to say is I'm very honored to be your host uh, for all you attendees, both now live as well as during the video during the uh, 15 Dow trade show. So um, a webinar like this uh, all round dairy webinar. Um, it's a collaboration between FIF and GDF, and we are honored that we are partners. So I will go to the uh, list of topics we're going to discuss today. So the topics are both visionary and practical. Um, we have first introduction about global dairy farmers. Then we have Brenda Jia uh, talk about the Nestle's contribution to China dairy upgrading. Then we have Mr. Snorri Sigurdsson talking about the right management for good milk quality. Then we have Mr. Ad van Velde talk about global dairy developments and the impact on running your farm. And I will introduce all the speakers uh, more elaborately uh, later on. And maybe uh, all our speakers can uh, shortly wave to the audience. Maybe Brenda, you first. Oh, and Snorri and Ad. Yes, perfect. So. Um, while our presenters are telling their story and uh, share their knowledge with you, you can fire away any questions you have, uh, which is dairy related, of course. Uh, and then you can ask, um, you can type all the questions you have, and there will be a couple of moments where I will read the questions to the speakers. So before we truly kick off, uh, I would like to tell you something about global dairy farmers. So GDF uh, brings together dairy farmers and other dairy experts um, uh, in uh, gatherings, in uh, events, in conferences, and we exchange ideas, knowledge and experience. We connect uh, successful and inspiring dairy farmers and dairy uh, experts at, at inspiring places and locations, such as last year, we had our conference in China where we also met our speakers, uh, which we're very grateful for that we're connected. Um, and we do everything with passion. Uh, it's all about entrepreneurship, about being connected, open and honest, and have a positive look at the future. Apologies. So before um, I pass on the word to our first speaker, I would just like to thank our speakers again, uh, Ms. Brenda, Ms. Nori, and Mr. Ott, uh, they, they are joining us today. And again, you can ask them any question you might have. So our first speaker of today is Ms. Brenda Gia. Uh, and I'm very happy to have her on board today. She is going to talk about Nestle's contribution for China's dairy upgrading. She is communication manager of the Nestle Dairy Farming Institute, uh, DFI in short. Uh, and this institute is located in, and apologies for my pronunciation, in Shuangsheng in Hilongjiang province, uh, covering an area of 600,000 square meter and containing one training farm and one training center. The farm includes more than uh, 1,300 milking cows for DFI training practice. So that's a little bit of an introduction, um, but Brenda will tell you a lot more about this uh, uh, training center and what their plans and practices are and help uh, improve and develop uh, China's dairy industry. So now I would like to give the word to Ms. Brenda Gia from Nestle DFI. Thank you. 
can you share your screen, Brenda? Uh, you stop. Please, uh, you stop. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Brenda, Brenda Jia from uh, Nestle Dairy Farming Institute. Today, I just uh, stand for our general manager, Mr. Zhang Zhendong, give this uh, presentation. Uh, uh, detailed introduction about the Nestle support China dairy upgrading. Yeah, uh, for this uh, first slide, we just uh, show two set of uh, photos. So the left one, that is uh, means the old generation of uh, dairy farming in China. So you can see uh, all the cars is uh, feed by by people up uh, by hand and uh, very old, very uh, dirty uh, the condition. So the other part of the, uh, the set of uh, group, the photos that show the modern, the, the, the photo is show that the GAFI farm. So here you can see the TMR and also the tower for collection for the TMR and also the car bars and also the feeding uh, all is uh, by the, the machine. So it's very high efficient. And also the milking bar uh, is modern and the uh, uh, same time can, can get uh, 40 the cars for the milking. So it's a very different for this uh, comparison. So why uh, that is why uh, China we are upgrade for the dairy farming. For this uh, mm, the important task and uh, vision. So uh, we Nestle has invested DFI that is a start from. Uh, 2014, and uh, we just uh, gave the operation in October. So DFI is a platform that we have training uh, for farm, and also we have uh, business partners. So they also have the R&D projects, and uh, we have cooperation with uh, academic uh, agriculture university, and also we have strong link with uh, government. So later I will give the detailed introduction about these relations in the next uh, slide. So uh, since the DFI uh, is built, this is a very new model in Nestle. So we have our vision to be uh, recognized as China's leading center of competence for dairy farming. And we also have our mission to develop the future farm managers and uh, professionals for the dairy industry. Uh, this is show what is uh, DFI, that uh, there is a lot of uh, audience not come here. So we total have uh, 600,000 square meters. There is a training center, just uh, this round building. And uh, uh, there is a farm that we divided by calf error, lactation course, feeding error, heifer error, and also the milking color. So that uh, is total now we have uh, in DI5. Uh, DFI is uh, very open uh, and also we use the winning business. So we have a cooperation with the uh, government to, uh, to provide a very professional facility and also the training class for all dairy farming industry that uh, support by the government. And also, uh, DFI is a very advanced, uh, comprehensive training facility. So we built a leading brand of in-depth uh, 
collaboration, uh, collaborative training with uh, association. And uh, also we have cooperation with uh, academic uh, agriculture university, just like UW uh, Wisconsin Medicine, that they gave the training for all the course in DFI, uh, the basic uh, training and also the other agriculture universities uh, to support on different areas, just like uh, uh, training uh, teacher, and also they design a new course. So later also there is a very detailed introduction about this part. And also we have a cooperation with uh, dairy enterprise that uh, like uh, uh, we cooperate as uh, business partners. They also give their high-end uh, technical support for DFI uh, farm operation. And also they support the training for, for the, uh, the training course and also other R&D projects. So this is uh, covered a different uh, area for this uh, cooperation. Uh, for DIFI, there have uh, three main business. Uh, one part is a training center. So we gave a lot of training to train the talents uh, in dairy. And uh, we have farm. This uh, farm, we uh, gave very strong support for the students have the practice in, in the farm. It's a very uh, attractive and also practical. And uh, we have more than 20 uh, companies as uh, DFI business partners. So this uh, business partner is divided by gold, academic, bronze, and uh, dairy business uh, partner and also the projects business partners. So they play a different role in, in DFI. Uh, some is focused on the nutrition uh, some is a focus on equipment, uh, machine, and uh, also the, the, the data. Uh, all is uh, uh, use their strong uh, technical, so play the role in DFI. Except uh, the uh, enterprise, we also have uh, media, two media uh, business partners, one uh, that gave the support for DFI promotion because all the cars we face to the market is open. So uh, all is from China and abroad. So uh, the, the training later will also uh, have a detailed introduction. So uh, for this uh, agenda, we just uh, gave three parts. The first one, we uh, just uh, give the introduction about cultivating outstanding talents in dairy farming. So uh, for DFI training course, we uh, divided by four levels. The first uh, picture you can see that there have a different level from level one to level four. That is our basic. Uh, training course design. All is designed by uh, Wisconsin Medicine, uh, you know, uh, you, the, the university. So all is a short um, training from three days to one month. And also the, uh, the students will face to different level. Uh, just an example, uh, the level one uh, that is uh, from the farm, just a basic employees, uh, they have practical uh, for this uh, basic uh, skills training. And the level two, we focus on the supervisor that uh, the, the course scale five or seven days training that is uh, focused on uh, the key uh, skill in the, in the farms for the supervisor. Uh, like uh, reproduction, milking, uh, feeding something. And also the level three, we focus on the high level uh, in the farm, just like uh, farm managers, uh, financial managers uh, or 
key uh, technical managers. This uh, course is uh, three weeks that is uh, focused on management and the key uh, control and also the skills. The level four that uh, focus on uh, very different, uh, that is uh, from the agriculture university, university the students uh, under graduation. So uh, the, this uh, one month, uh, the students can have uh, much more practice in the farm. So uh, for them, to the gap that they cannot touch in the in the school. So this uh, one month course is uh, delivered by the professor from uh, Wisconsin and all in English. So the uh, very good and the positive feedback from the students. Except the basic training, we also have uh, developed some uh, new model for the, the training course. Uh, one is uh, on-site training. So uh, the FI trainer, the teacher can go to the farm, give a uh, detailed uh, training uh, on the farm for the practice. And the other way that uh, is uh, uh, the exclusive course that we cooperate with uh, some big uh, dairy companies. Uh, here, just uh, give the the sample that uh, is Jun uh, Le Bao. Uh, we have uh, several years cooperation, so uh, they are already have three years cooperation. Uh, each year, they will send. Uh, uh, more than 100 students here. Uh, we designed the course uh, based on their requirement. So it's also very uh, good uh, uh, feedback from the students. So uh, for this year, uh, there are also some new course we are designed for this uh, company. And uh, the last one that is online course, since the core in the 19, uh, as this year. So we developed the online course uh, this year. We cooperate with our gold uh, and the brown uh, business partners. So uh, we just uh, de designed a different topic for, for this uh, two hours uh, uh, online training and uh, also covered a lot of uh, people from the dairy industry and also get a very uh, good result. So uh, for DFI, the training is very unique. We uh, have the classroom lecture, uh, case study, uh, farm practice, uh, library uh, analysis and also data management. So combine this uh, this uh, the, the the different way of practice is very useful and attractive and easy uh, for students to get what they have learned during the training. Think, uh, that is uh, the course uh, number. Uh, since the start of DFI until now, until the end of 2019, we have delivered 260 course. And also we have trained more than 11,000 students. So you can see that the pillar, the graph, they have show each year we have different number uh, from uh, 991 uh, in 2015 until last year. Uh, we uh, already have uh, 3,000, uh, more than 3,000 students in DFI. So it's a big jump uh, each year. So uh, it's uh, very fruitful uh, for the talent training in dairy industry. <clears throat> so for this agenda, the second part, we just uh, talking about uh, the creating dairy industry lighting horse farm that gave the more detailed introduction about the DIY farm. So this is the picture that we show DIY farm that now we totally 
also have 1,600 course, and uh, there have adult course uh, 800, and uh, six, 650 milking course, and uh, there we have 32 employees uh, for this uh, for the farm, and uh, the yield per day is uh, 40 kg. So uh, that uh, is a new milestone uh, in in our farm. The this uh, milestone is uh, creating uh, the end of last year, under supporting by our business partners. We uh, the DI farm the DI five farm become a lighting horse farm. So uh, that is uh, we break the. The, the new stone uh, for the 42 kg milk production uh, each day. Based on the good business in uh, for the DI5 farm, so last year, Nicely uh, has invested uh, the, the, the fund for the farm expansion. So in uh, last year, we have phase one, um, the expansion farm. Uh, here, uh, you can see that uh, the highlight with yellow, that is uh, the new uh, farm uh, is built. So uh, with uh, this uh, uh, project achieved until 2021, uh, we have uh, 2,100 cars can be uh, until next year. So uh, for this, uh, the new bar potential is uh, uh, have 720 cars. So they are, uh, have uh, increased the quantity for the, the milking. Uh, this set of photos show the milestone for the construction for the, the, the farm expansion. So we kick off the project uh, last year, October 1st, then uh, nearly the end of the year. So uh, the, the project is uh, achieved in the end of last year very quickly. There has the milestone that uh, column erection uh, top steel beam installation, the open bar construction that uh, based on the, the original one, and also the side wall plate ins installation. Also, the, the inside decoration work is uh, achieved very successfully, uh, even in uh, tough conditions. Yeah, uh, it's a very successful project. So this year, Nestle uh, continue to invest uh, to to uh, enlarge the expansion farm on phase phase two. So this uh, project we are achieved in two years. So this year we are uh, finished the basic. Uh, the the work and the next year we are finish all the projects. So the yellow part is the the phase two construction. Uh, after the the farm achieved for phase two, that uh, until two thousand twenty four, the fresh milk will be uh, ninety five tons per day is a big achievement. So current now, uh, currently now we have 442 uh, tons capacity per day. So that, that is a big uh, achievement for the few years. Except uh, the, the farm expansion. So for DFI, there is another very important uh, project um, that is a uh, green competence center. So uh, this center we are support local sustainable agriculture development in Heilongjiang and to improve the cap capacity of the entire value chain from farm to low material. So this center has invested uh, 10 million by Nestle this year. Uh, we have the plan 
the the, the ceremony will be held next week. Uh, we will celebrate this uh, this uh, groundbreaking. And uh, for this center, uh, we will cover the different area on agriculture, such as uh, soil, seeds, uh, fertilizer, pesticides, digital machinery, drying and store, processing, R&D, organic. So this, uh, this area, we will attract more uh, business uh, partners to join this uh, platform for this uh, uh, agriculture and the food value chain. And also uh, welcome academic partners uh, to join us uh, on agriculture, also on food. So uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, stakeholders will get benefits from this platform like landowners and farmers. And also uh, we, uh, for, this, uh, for this center, we also have a strong link with uh, government association organization in agriculture and uh, to, to get some uh, uh, new projects. And uh, also uh, we are uh, ensuring compliance and the competitive raw material for all the food companies to, to this uh, supply chain. And uh, uh, our customers also can get engagement and the communication uh, through our training, through our activity. And in this uh, uh, Grand Center, Competence uh, building, we also have uh, some uh, uh, library on, uh, on, on this area and also uh, some show from our business partners. And the other very important part is a uh, demonstration, the field spot. We will show some planting and uh, also the uh, trail. So uh, next year, there should have some training for our farmers. Uh, to to get improvement for the technical. So uh, this uh, slide we have show uh, the design for the green competence center. That uh, the building the, is uh, is built uh, just beside of the I five, and uh, uh, there have some uh, some new equipment in this building later. So uh, for this agenda, the other, the last part, we just gave the introduction about our promotion that for the modern agriculture development. Uh, the first, uh, the first important activity in DFI, uh, we have uh, uh, our fifth anniversary ceremony last year in October. So there are more than 100 attendees from Nestle, government and the business partners to uh, join the, this, uh, this uh, celebration. And uh, we have uh, a video show that uh, what achievement in DFI for last five years. And also uh, Nestle, a China CEO and uh, some officials uh, has uh, delivered uh, uh, an important speech. And uh, there are more than uh, 30 medias uh, gave the, the, the reports, the news report on this event. And uh, we get uh, very positive feedback from the government and the business partners. So except uh, the, uh, the fifth anniversary in DFI, uh, Last year, we also organized uh, together with, with our gold business partners uh, for a serious event uh, in Tianjin that uh, we are organized a dairy conference by DAC uh, that uh, we uh, hold a forum. Uh, there are more than 500 attendees uh, the audience have uh, joined us, and uh, our full gold um, 
business partners rep, uh, the experts deliver the presentation on different kind of topic. Just a focus on the sustainable farm development. And uh, we have signed a new gold uh, business partner, ABS, join DFI. And uh, we have a deep cooperation with Northeast Agriculture University, just on dairy research center. Uh, there have more uh, projects we are developed here. So this event is promote, promoted by uh, China Dairy, Host 10 and the Dairy Time, and uh, more uh, attractive from the, from the dairy industry. So in the evening, we have the dinner party together with our business partners and also our customers. Except these two uh, activity, we also have a booth show in, on the dairy conference in Tianjin. There uh, is a 135 uh, square meters booth there to show the FI and our, our BPs. And uh, more than 2,000 uh, visitors there uh, to negotiate cooperation and uh, to know about the, the training and also the, the projects in the FI. Except uh, the, the visitors, uh, more than 100 farmers from uh, Nestle Fengcheng and uh, Nestle Qingdao, they joined this uh, activity to know more about uh, the experience uh, dairy uh, technical. And also, uh, it's a very good opportunity to, to communicate with our uh, all the stakeholders. Uh, in Nestle, that CSV means uh, creating shared value is the enterprise uh, philosophy. So uh, DFI as an important activity for CSV in Nestle, we have uh, planned uh, seven uh, the, the, uh, the activities, CSV activities in DFI to support uh, the, the image for, for the marketing image of, of Nestle. So last year we have joined uh, China Dairy Public Interest event, uh, gave the introduction about the DFI and also we have some donation for, for the dairy. And also uh, we have a true uh, project training for, for farmers for um, the manual management. And uh, also uh, each year, we just gave the training for the future China dairy talents. So also on the health case program, uh, we have received uh, students from Xingfu uh, Tong School. The, the students have uh, the knowledge on the nutrition. And also, uh, last year we have received uh, more than 300 uh, students from Northeast Agriculture University for the farm practice. Um, and uh, also, uh, the other two we have mentioned just now that Tianjin Dairy Conference and also DFI, uh, the fifth anniversary celebration. So uh, for these uh, seven CSV activities, we have two, more than 2,000 people joined the, the activity and uh, very high uh, positive uh, feedback from the media and also the, the industry people. Uh, for uh, DFI, uh, we, we have a uh, uh, DFI intensity, uh, we, we just calculate since uh, 2015 until each year, we, we just uh, combined uh, from the visitors and also event attendees and also the students make the number for each year uh, for us uh, to to, to, to know what the condition that, uh, what how uh, DFI uh, the operation. So uh, you can see that uh, each year is increased for this number. Uh, 
the green color is a visitor. The red one is a event attendees, which the, some company uh, organize uh, some activity in DFI use our facility. Uh, the, the people we are drawing for these activities. And also the, the last one, the blue one is uh, the training students from DFI. So uh, in 2019, we total received uh, 6,500, uh, more than this number uh, for the, 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 the total people. And uh, also uh, more than 50 events in DFI and uh, more than uh, 2,500 participants for these activities. And then we, we have received nearly 1,000 visitors. So 25% uh, is from the university government and the really uh, relevant institutions. It's a very uh, effective. For the future, uh, DFI have is a big plan. The first one, uh, we continue uh, to 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 contribute to the competitiveness and the sustainability of the China Dairy. Give the training uh, for the talents, and also we will become a competent center for nutrition cycle management. Uh, this part uh, include a greenhouse gas reduction, animal health, and the disease management, management in close co uh, cooperation with our business partners, uh, academic universities, and also the government. And uh, also, we will further uh, expand the uh, DFI farm for big farm and uh, the just now mentioned the Green Competence Center. We are continue enhance the development of the modern agriculture in Heilongjiang, in Shuangcheng, even in China. So that's all uh, the short introduction about for the, the case of the time. I just gave the short introduction about the DFI. So uh, here is uh, the, the, the QR for, for official WeChat for DFI. Uh, there are some uh, important activities, uh, some uh, news, some uh, training information will be uh, delivered here. So if you are interested, you can scan this QR to get uh, more information about DFI. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Brenda. Yeah. Uh, very interesting, very detailed. Um, before we go on to our next speaker, uh, I would like to ask everyone to give a virtual applause to Brenda. So a little bit Thank of you. this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we visited your farm uh, last year and uh, yeah, I must agree, very impressive. Uh, a lot of knowledge there. Thank yeah. you very much, Brenda. Yeah, okay. Uh, welcome to DIFI. Uh, there is a, uh, every year there have a big change. Uh, there we just uh, to do more and more uh, on farm, on dairy, and on the agriculture will give our contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Then I would like now to ask Mr. Snorri Sergetson to uh, turn on his camera so I can properly introduce him. So the next topic um, we discuss is presented by this uh, very knowledgeable gentleman. Um, so Mr. Sigurdsson is the head of China Denmark Milk Technology Corporation Center, CDMTCC. It's a Mouthful, which is a joint venture between Arla Foods, Amba, and Meng, Meng Yu Dairy. And besides that, he's an educated farmer, as I said before, and holds a master's degree in agronomy. He has over 20 years of work experience and has inspected over 2,200 dairy farms in 22 countries and has been teaching on various related topics in dairy. Um, 
We are happy to tell you that today he will share his knowledge on the right management for good milk quality with us. Go ahead, um, Mr. Sigurdsson. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to share my screen with you here. And uh, this should be it. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you all, and uh, for listening and being here, and uh, and of course uh, to the organization for inviting me to give this speech. Um, I will be today talking about uh, the right management for good milk quality. Um, first, uh, a little bit about myself. Um, as was said in the introduction, I'm a, I'm an educated farmer. Uh, I went a little bit different way to the agronomy uh, than many others. But uh, I'm actually Icelandic. I'm from Iceland, and I moved there from Denmark, and uh, that's why I'm heading the China-Denmark Milk Technology Cooperation Center, and now uh, in China. Uh, a little bit about our center. Um, we are uh, a joint venture um, between Mangnu and, and Arlo Foods, and we basically are here uh, in China uh, and have been since 2012. Uh, to operate uh, and spread the knowledge uh, uh, from Europe, from Denmark especially, uh, to the Chinese uh, farmers, especially the ones that are providing milk uh, to Mang Niu. And uh, our goal is basically to broaden the know-how uh, on dairy farming. Uh, it has changed dramatically in the last eight years, and actually in the last three, four years, we have seen a tremendous change in the dairy farming industry in China. Um, we are also here to improve the milk quality, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, but of course, uh, we try to focus on how to reduce the production cost of, of, uh, of um, the milk and to improve uh, the standard of uh, the Chinese farms in the in overall uh, uh, take. Uh, we have been focusing on higher efficiency of dairy cows. Um, maybe you know this, but the Danish dairy cows are are uh, one of the highest yielding cows in the world. The Holstein cows are yielding now uh, 11 tons and 700 kilos of energy corrected milk, uh, which is uh, close to uh, close to the highest yielding cows uh, of 12 tons in Israel. So uh, the Danish farmers are very efficient, and the Danish cows are also very efficient. But of course, now in the times of Corona and and uh, problems, uh, we have been also focusing on animal welfare and disease control, uh, and uh, that's uh, also part of our job. Um, we have like the DFI, we have a WeChat uh, page uh, where we share all kinds of knowledge and videos, and uh, is there some problems with the videos? I'm getting a message here from uh, from the uh, from the audience. They are complaining about something here. Let's see. Can you see? Can you see it now? If you can speak, you can speak, please. Yes, we can see you. You can see the PPT? Yes. Sure. Yes, sure. as well. The connection here at the hotel, I'm in a quarantine, guys, so uh, the connection here is actually quite quite slow, so maybe that's the, that's the reason. But uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, uh, the organization has uh, 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 sharing uh, all kinds of videos and teaching and training materials also and it's for free and it's open for everybody so uh, feel free to uh, to either visit the homepage or or the uh, wechat account but let's talk about milk quality usually when we talk about milk quality we have uh, many different uh, things in the milk that we look at um, most farmers in like in china uh, only focus on somatic cell count and total bacterial count but uh, there are many other uh, things like thermal resistant bacteria, freezing points of milk acidity, uh, anaerobic spores, uh, free fatty acids or inhibitors, and, and we can actually name more. But today, because of the time shortness, uh, we're only going to focus on uh, the two big parts, which is the somatic cell count and uh, the total bacterial count. Um, basically, uh, with the somatic cell count or mastitis, as it is uh, indicated for um, 
it's all about uh, good milking and clean cows. Um, the cleaner your cows are, the cleaner the environment is, the less uh, opportunities there are for uh, inhibitors like bacteria to overlive and, 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 uh, and uh, get into the cow. There are all kinds of things that uh, have influence on the mastitis in the cows, as you probably know. Um, it can be the milking machines, the climate, the housing and the bedding, but it all comes down to management. Um, we can make the cow stronger. Uh, we can make with genes or, or breeding uh, operations. We can also uh, uh, get another breed uh, or, or stronger cows in that way. We can use a lot of medicine, of course, which we no, never recommend. But uh, with good management, we can see that uh, we manage uh, actually to get the uh, somatic cell count uh, and the, the frequency of mastitis uh, down to uh, uh, reasonable um, levels. In the bigger farms in China, we are actually seeing uh, somatic cell count average in the bulk. Uh, that means in the tank, uh, somewhere close to uh, 100 or 110,000 on average on a yearly basis which is uh, very good. It's actually quite impressive. Um, it's a little bit more difficult in the smaller farms, but the bigger farms uh, have more uh, possibilities to, uh, to have good routine. But um, when we talk about somatic cell count in cows, um, basically we're talking about the T-dent. Uh, this is a, a, a picture I borrowed from a colleague of ours in Denmark, uh, where uh, it basically is focusing on the T-dent. If you can prevent uh, the bacteria to get into the cow, you can basically um, prevent a lot of cases of mastitis. So it's all about keeping the teeth dent clean, keeping and protecting the cow or the cow's teeth dent, and uh, in that way, uh, trying to avoid the cow to get sick. We can use all kinds of things uh, to do this. Uh, but um, we usually try to focus on, on two different uh, uh, timelines or time uh, areas in the cow uh, cow's life or cow's life cycle. Um, we know that uh, the cases of mastitis increase a lot right around drying off, and we know also they are vulnerable around calving. So these are the two uh, points in the life of a cow or life cycle of a cow where we focus on, where we uh, put in extra measures to make sure the cow. Uh, gets, uh, or, well, does not get a mastitis. Well, to find a mastitis is quite commonly used to use the CMT uh, uh, test. I'm sorry, this is in, in, in Danish. This is uh, something I made when I was a milk quality advisor in Denmark many, many years ago. But it's still valid. It's still the most used test in the whole world, uh, the CMT uh, test, California mastitis test. And it for sure works quite well to uh, to find indication of problems in the in uh, in the other um, we can do it in all kinds of other ways we can use machines we can use conductivity uh, and uh, we can use even uh, the farmers using robots can use all kinds of indexes or, or computer simulation um, but uh, when it comes to uh, practical um, practical things and practical use uh, uh, to me, the CMT test is uh, the most simple way to find indication of a problem. Uh, but why is the uh, um, somatic cell count important? Why is it important to keep it low? Uh, this uh, page uh, uh, or this uh, graph uh, from a research done about 10 years ago is actually quite good and shows what happens when, when you reduce the the milk yield, no, the, when you reduce the somatic cell count uh, in, in cows and, and the both first lactation cows and multiple cows. Uh, as you can see, uh, with a growing somatic cell count, even if the cows are not sick, uh, they don't have acute cases of mastitis. They just have a high cell count. Uh, we lose a lot of yield per every day. We lose a lot of yield. So uh, we uh, always try to aim for as low somatic cell count as possible because that simply gives us more milk in the tank, gives us more milk from the cows. Uh, when we talk to the farmers, and when I talk to the farmers, I've done this, uh, like everyone said, uh, I've, I've inspected farms in, in over 22 countries and I've talked to uh, thousands of farmers. 
uh, I always try to keep the message simple. Uh, uh, try to uh, uh, change the attitude of the farmer. Try to uh, uh, get him to understand why this is important. Uh, we are producing food for people. Uh, it should be clean environment we produce it in. We should keep our cows clean. We should keep our cubicles clean. The, the barn should be clean. We are making uh, food uh, and uh, we should uh, operate in a way we are a, a food producer. Uh, in this way, we make safe products and good products. But it's also very important when you have a problem with your cow. So you need to have good diagnostics. Uh, you need to diagnose your cows. You need to find out why are they getting sick. Uh, too many farmers in many, many countries, I'm not only talking about China here, uh, simply treat cows with uh, antibiotics, not knowing what kind of bacteria is causing the problem. The bacteria are all different and they act in a different way. And we have a different fighting plan for each bacteria type. So if you don't know what kind of bacteria is causing the problem, you basically need to use all the tools in the book. You need to do everything uh, uh, according to the book. But if you know what kind of bacteria is causing the problem, you can basically narrow your actions down to this specific bacteria. You can uh, do what is uh, necessary to eradicate this type of bacteria. It can be a bacteria that uh, only grows in the barn. Then you don't need to focus on the milking. And then you just focus on the barn, how to fix it. It can be bacteria that grows in the water. It can be bacteria that is contagious uh, and then uh, and, uh, is spreading from cow to cow. And then you need to focus on the milking. So we need to know, uh, first of all, what is causing the problems, and then you can uh, make a, a plan to fix it. If you don't do this, if you don't have a good diagnostics tool, you have to, first of all, use a lot of antibiotics, and that's not good because we can get uh, antimicrobial uh, uh, resistance in the group, in the herd, uh, and uh, we can get a super bacteria, which is very bad, of course. But uh, if we don't have diagnostics, we simply need to do everything according to uh, the known five-point plan, uh, I think everybody knows that because this has been around for almost 60 years now. Uh, you have to keep your cows clean at any cost anyway. Uh, and basically what we always recommend farmers not to do is to treat uh, cows if they only have high somatic cell count in the lactation. You treat them in the dry period and uh, not in the lactation itself because that's... Uh, more or less uh, useless uh, if you're treating uh, CNS bacteria. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the most efficient way to fight bacteria, uh, mastitis, it's, uh, uh, we know that by fact that's the dry period. Uh, this is when the cow is resting, this is when the cow is healing and, and making preparations for the next lactation. This is the best time to give her medicine if she needs medicine. Uh, but it's important to know if she needs it or not. You need to take samples from the cow. You need to grow bacteria from the teat. And uh, if there's no bacteria, there's no need for uh, medicine. Uh, the blanket cow treatment uh, was known and used for decades all over the world. All cows treated all the time. Today, uh, this is thankfully a method that is going away. Fewer and fewer uh, farmers are doing it because it's not uh, very efficient, it creates super bacteria, and it's also an expen uh, expensive way of, of uh, treating cows. We have today very good methods to analyze cows, analyze bacteria, I mean, and we can easily find the right medicine for the right cows. We always recommend use of teat sealant, even though if the cow is not uh, having any bacteria infection, teat sealant is always good to protect her in the dry period. We also recommend farmers to dip them um, every day, the first week of dry off. Remember the, the picture I showed you before? It had uh, uh, a time right after drying off and right before calving or around calving. This is the, the time when she is vulnerable. So if you dip her every day or your workers dip them every day, that means the cows uh, will get attention. They will be looked at. And if something is going on, if something is swallowing, uh, uh, the other, you can treat treat the cows, so you keep uh, keep an eye on them at this time. But um, as I said before, keep them clean, keep your cows clean, scrape down the manure. Uh, if you do it properly, uh, the uh, frequency of mastitis and the somatic cell count will 
go down. Uh, I've never seen uh, the other way around. It's usually quite good connection between dirty cows, dirty environment, and the uh, high frequency of mastitis and somatic cell count. Um, we also uh, look at the uh, milking machine, uh, and we know that if the milking machine is uh, poorly uh, uh, maintained, we get higher uh, frequency of, of uh, uh, mastitis. Uh, and uh, we need to uh, have a, a good uh, routine for maintenance of, of, uh, of the, the, the milking machines uh, to, uh, to uh, work with. This is actually a, a, a different picture here. Another one thing, another thing, I, I pardon, uh, pardon the picture, it's not a good picture of a dirty cow. Uh, it was taken in Tunisia and Africa a few years back. But uh, one of the things we use, uh, uh, which is quite efficient, is to, uh, to do a VATIA test on the milking to measure how good the milking routine is, to measure how good the cows are letting down the milk. Um, and this is a very good computer tool to... Uh, watch over the milking, what is going on in the milking, if the cows are working with you, if you are working with the cows in the right way, are your milkers doing the right preparation and so on. Is the takeoff level uh, or ACR level, automatic cluster removal level uh, right? Everything is uh, possible to read from, from uh, the, the data from a computer like this. And this is uh, used uh, actually quite many uh, places in China today. Uh, the Vadia is, uh, is a unique tool to uh, watch over cows and watch over milking uh, to make it uh, good and efficient. This is a picture that shows a reading from uh, uh, the Vadia. And it's hard for the one that does not know what is looking at uh, to see what it is. But it basically tells us about the vacuum fluctuations under the water uh, at milking and how the teats uh, are swallowing up and how they are acting under the milking. Uh, and we can see from this picture, uh, or I can see from this picture, that this farm, this is measurement from six different cows in the upper picture, um, and many of them are hanging on to the milk. Uh, they are not letting down the milk properly. So this is an indication that the stimulation of the teat or teat end is not good uh, at this farm. Uh, so uh, a computer reading like this is, is essential uh, when you're working with uh, cows and working with mastitis and looking at the causes of, of mastitis. I want to talk a little bit about the, the TPC also. Um, there, there are a lot of different bacteria that uh, are counted inside the total bacteria count. This is the name, TPC. It stands for total bacteria count. It's not one type of bacteria. There are many different types of bacteria. They grow under different connection, uh, uh, conditions, and they can spread in a different way. But those that are counted in the TPC uh, in the machines uh, have in common that they are uh, not resistant to heat, they are quite easy to kill uh, if you do uh, a proper work. And what is a proper work? Uh, first of all, you need to have a good designed uh, system. Um, I've seen in China many uh, interesting solutions or suggestions about solutions, like on the picture on the left, where you see there is a farm that was planning expansion or extension of the farm, he was going to build another uh, farm and add to the milking system later. So they just made already uh, uh, this end that should be connected to the next uh, milking parlor later or milking line later. In there was, of course, uh, a lot of bacteria because it's very difficult to wash. And if you look at the schematic picture on the right, you can see that it's uh, almost not possible to clean something like this. Dead ends are, uh, are not good when you talk about uh, TPC because the bacteria can grow there constantly and, and spread from there. But also weldings. We see uh, some uh, interesting choice of materials sometimes in some farms in China uh, where the materials or metal materials used are uh, of uh, quality that is questionable. Uh, you cannot and may not save money on uh, on uh, the, uh, the the stainless steel that you're using in the milking systems 
you have to use good quality materials and you have to use the right tools to weld them together. Otherwise, you have all kinds of problems that can lead to holes like on the picture here. And in those holes, we can have bacteria that can spread constantly and keep the TPC high. But basically, uh, to uh, kill the TPC is uh, the washing. If you have a good washing, it's just like with uh, fighting the coronavirus. Uh, we all heard about we should wash our hands with soap. We should rub them together for 20 seconds. We should use hot water uh, when we wash our hands. And we should uh, disinfect the hands afterwards with a disinfectant. This is basically exactly the same way we explain washing to farmers. Uh, we need good contact time, so the washing water needs to wash the system inside out. We need some mechanical effect. We need to push the water in uh, pulsations and with force, so it scrubs the inside of the liners, insides of the tubes and, and pipes. We could need high temperature to kill the bacteria, and we need some detergent, uh, some soap and some disinfection chemicals. So basically, it's, uh, it's exactly the same. We know this method works and we can measure it and we can monitor it quite easily. So if you have all these things in order, uh, you should not have a problem. But if you have a problem, if you still have a problem with TPC, uh, many farmers ask me, they, they think they have everything under control, but still they have a problem. Uh, how can you find the problem? Well, when the milk comes from the cow, it should be more or less clean. It should have a very low TPC. So it comes somewhere. The TPC starts somewhere from the tea dent to the milk truck. So just follow the milk. Follow the line of the milk. Where is the milk going? Where will it be stored? What kind of things is it meeting on the way? And if you follow the milk, you will find the problem. I can promise you that. Uh, it has never failed. There we go. So um, this was uh, what I had to quickly to say to you about uh, the milk quality uh, and good management around that. Uh, I urge you to uh, follow the WeChat page uh, so you can uh, see more of our both newsletters and, and videos. And uh, I thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, Snorri. Very practical presentation. I think uh, a lot of uh, tips for our audience. Um, the Questions uh, we're going to ask after our last presenter's uh, presentation. So we have a little bit of a panel discussion together with uh, Mr. Alte van Velde. And that actually brings me to introducing our next presenter. Um, Ad, could you turn on your camera? Yes, hi. So our last presenter is uh, Mr. Ad van Velde. He's a proud dairy farmer uh, in the Netherlands, uh, a country where many generations of farmers have faced and overcome various challenges related to dairy business. Uh, Mr. Ad has, uh, together with his wife Annette, um, uh, developed Hunting Go Dairy, which is a successful family dairy business. And it's in harmony with nature, where healthy cows live and have lived for uh, many generations. So, and as the president of Global Dairy Farmers, he knows what's on farmers' minds uh, worldwide. He's also involved with um, global projects, starting up uh, dairy farms, um, improving them, optimizing them. And I'm happy to tell you that today he will share his vision on the global dairy developments and the impact on running a business farm, uh, farm business, excuse me. You can share your presentation. It's okay, Yvonne. Um, I'd like to thank the organization to uh, give this presentation about my view on uh, what's happening in the world and what, uh, what that means for my farm, for the farmers in the Netherlands and maybe for the dairy farmers worldwide. Uh, there's a lot of information on my presentation and it is free for the organization to uh, to share everything. I'm always looking ahead. 
as a farmer, I'm all, always uh, interested what is happening in the world. Uh, and it is one side, it's uh, from my perspective as a farmer, and on the other side, it is from my perspective as president of Global Dairy Farmers. Uh, last year, I visited China three times, and it's always uh, impressive how to see how this country is developing. I try to give a helicopter view, uh, what's happening in the world, what are the trends, what are interesting movements the coming decades. I always try to, already told you, I always try to make relationships, what's happening in the world, what's happening on my farm. It's every day, uh, it's a challenge for me to also run a successful and profitable dairy farm. This is interesting view of, uh, of worldwide population. And uh, the, one th the one thing what is surprising is the average age, uh, especially in Africa. It's 18 years average. So uh, this, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, if you compare it with the Netherlands, it gives a lot of, it gives a different dynamic, dynamic, dynamic for Africa, and also for the need of dairy, of the economic growth, and, and so on, and so on. We are in the Netherlands. We are an exporting country of dairy, and the African market is a very important market. And if you look. Uh, like a slide like this, maybe it would be more and more important in the future. So uh, it's also uh, from importance for my, for me as a dairy farmer. If you decide, it's also an interesting slide. If you decide the world in four parts where the people live. It is you get you get a crazy uh, picture like this uh, in the in India and the countries around India. There lives twenty five percent of the world's population, and even that will grow in the coming years. You can see that on this slide. Uh, you can see that especially countries in Africa, in Nigeria, uh, uh, China will grow, India will grow. So we thought in 2050, we get the total uh, different situation in the world. And it's also become, hey, if you talk about economic power, uh, strategic power, it, is, uh, it will be a total different picture. This is also interesting. It is, um, it's a relevant study and you can see the, the, the sources down to the side. Um, it's what's happening in the direction to 2030. There will be still a shortage of dairy, dairy products in Africa, in China, in Asia and uh, producing count in the US, uh, European Union, New Zealand, Australia, that position is, uh, there is now a certain position and that will not change or maybe it will becoming worse or uh, how do you call it in 2027. This is uh, about consumption trends. Um, what you here see is the difference between countries, between regions, and how they eat uh, their dairy. Uh, it, or is it processed or it's fresh? And uh, we have in, in the Netherlands, we have uh, over Europe, we have a certain tradition of cheese and, 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 and other stuff, but you also have that in Pakistan or in India, where they have a total different market 
uh, from fresh products. So uh, that's right now the situation, and that will be the situation in the future. And of course, it's uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I was in India last year. It's it's very interesting and impressive how they use dairy in their diet. <laughs> The, scum, the coming slides are all about reinventing milk. And now milk is, is, is compared to water, the price is compared to water, uh, that's crazy. And we have, as farmers, as, as, as industry, we have to change that because yeah, it is, uh, you, you cannot compare milk, you, uh, a great product as milk. With, uh, with water. All these pictures are about this. And we need to, we have, have to do it together. Farmers, industry, maybe consumers as well. It's very important. It's very, it is, uh, it's quite a challenge. It's, it's uh, uh, yeah, a challenge to coming years. Another thing what will be uh, important, it's of course, it is the environment, sustainability, and many, many other things. And like at our farm, we, we get a premium for grazing. We get a premium, a premium of, of our milk. And we get a premium for a reduction of antibiotics. Uh, grazing cows outside, uh, animal welfare, it is scored, uh, animal health, we have, it's scored, yeah, there is a score, and it are all premiums on the milk price. And I think, uh, I believe in that, I think uh, it will be also the future in other countries, because the consumer, uh, the consumer uh, in, in our country, the consumer pay, is willing to pay for it. So that is already the next step, what consumers are making. Important as well, dairy. And we have a lot of discussion about uh, plant-based products and, and, and alternatives and vegans. And, and uh, I think that will grow. But I think also uh, dairy will remain a uh, very important part of the global diet. It's pure, uh, it's no processed, or it's very basic processed, and it's not completely uh, produced in a factory like margarine or, or something like that. But uh, I think when I look at the farmer, I think the, the lesson for us is how the alternatives. Uh, check my. my uh, uh, the the lesson for me as a farmer is how to uh, how do the alternatives, uh, the the the, the, the plant based dairies, how do they do the marketing and, uh, and so on. That's something we can learn from, from that. China. It's, uh, yeah, China, the leaders of China make milk as an emblem of the modern uh, affluent society. And they want to triple the consumption. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's a huge challenge for, for China, for the, the authorities, for the farmers, for everybody. Uh, I already told you I was three times uh, last year in in, in, in in China and you get yogurt in the air, in the airplane uh, and it, uh, all kinds of dairy products as a dessert. So it was completely new. And if China goes, it's always about China. If they go to, to the to the side to the right way, they go to it. They they uh, go to it. 
they realize it and they realize it very fast. So, uh, yeah, it is, once again, it's, uh, it's a huge challenge. Yeah? How, whether they got the milk, do they gonna produce it by themselves or uh, do they import, gonna import more? Um, if you make a calculation on it, um, uh, uh, Brenda already talked about uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, or environmental topics. Uh, is there land enough? No, and we cannot. Uh, I think it will be a combination of growing imports and a growing internal production. Uh, Snorri told all about uh, uh, the technical improvements they can make. And we visit with global dairy farmers China last year, and of course we see we see very nice farms, but we all see that uh, there are, there are uh, many improvements to make. Yeah. So and and they can do that, and they can realize that. So it will be a combination of uh, growing imports <laughs> and a growing internal production. This is from a presentation I gave last year and there was uh, Professor Yang Yun gives a presentation and on this uh, data, on this figure, you can see that uh, yeah, a lot of products, uh, China will become self-sufficient except dairy products. And uh, what I already told you, the import will grow as well. Main conclusions for me, who can deliver the milk to Asia, China, and Africa? And I think and on the other side, uh, milk production must increase worldwide. And there are very, there are many, many relevant studies uh, and they have all the same uh, output that the milk production has to, has to increase. Now I will um, tell you something about our farm, about the Netherlands, and how I look at the future of uh, the dairy farmers. It's me. Uh, on the left side above, it was in India. Was a visit last year. Uh, in the uh, at the bottom, you see me at the plant of the Heus. The Heus is a large feed company. It was in uh, Ethiopia. The Heus is also a partner of Global Dairy Farmers. And on the right side, you see uh, me at a uh, farm in Denmark. It is uh, one of our very uh, proud. Global dairy farmers. Martijn, he lives in Denmark. Very uh, ambitious young guy. This is our farm. I don't know if the movie will work, but we will see. I can hear it. Everybody? It's just, uh, just two minutes, one and a half minutes. It's in the northern part of the Netherlands, grazing the cows. Cows can choose inside, outside. We're milking with uh, milking robots, 200 cows, four robots. It's a very scenic region. In the summer, I'm feeding uh, fresh grass uh, in the barn. And, and I already told you they can, we can, they can go outside, inside. They make their own decision. Very nice area. I have now, I think, one thousand people from China on my farm. Yeah, so many visitors. Yeah, and they, they're looking at our farm and they're looking at the cows, but uh, they often look at the blue sky. So 
So it's always surprising. I think the, uh, the future, <laughs> And what is uh, what about the future of the of, of of the dairy farmers? We are always at the end of the chain, and in general, uh, it's dirty work, it's hard work, and uh, small margins, uh, not always profitable. And uh, yeah, it was twenty years ago. It was fifty years ago, and I think maybe it will be in the future as well. Uh, I, I, what me is surprised always is the difference in management. You see it in my region, you see it in countries, you see it worldwide. Uh, there are good farmers who make money and there are uh, poor farmers who doesn't make money. And it's a movement, it's a trend, you see it, uh, you see it everywhere. It is becoming important. Oh, it is important nowadays, tomorrow, yesterday. So it is. Uh, and that's the challenge as a farmer. These are pictures from uh, all GDF farmers. Uh, Matt Reed on the left side is from in Australia. It's a grazing farm, and on the on the right side above it is green fields in Indonesia. 3,000 cows uh, on the right, on the left side under it's New Zealand and on the right side it is uh, Texas, USA. These are all GDF farms. I think we, uh, how do we manage uh, our farms in the future? I think we, uh, we make a huge step the last couple, last 30 years in product, productivity, in quality of dairy products, uh, cow comfort, it's huge. And I think in even, uh, no, I think in the coming 10 years, uh, 20 years, it will be larger steps as well. And what you see, Snorri talked about production. And we, are, we at our farm, we have with a ratio of uh, a lot of roughage. Uh, uh, we, are, we, are, we have cows who are producing 60, 70 liters a day. And uh, not just with concentrate, but with uh, as much roughage as possible. Because I told you about premiums. In the Netherlands, we have, syst we have a, a system that uh, the much roughage you use in your uh, ration of the cows, you get also a premium because they tell hey, you have to uh, buy less soy from Argentina. We have to, uh, oh, that's a bit of story behind. So, and I think with genetics, with all the buildings, with new grass varieties, with new corn varieties, alpha, alpha, uh, we will get a higher production as well. And a higher producing cow is more efficient uh, uh, in transforming feed to milk. And also more efficient uh, in producing of greenhouse gases. These are two slides. This is, um, this is what I mean about the difference in management. You, I already told you, uh, uh, in the Netherlands, in Europe, these are in, in the bottom line, you see all countries, and I, I don't uh, tell you all the details about this, but you can see the difference between the cost price of a good producing farm and the cost price of a bad producing farm. And that was 10 years ago the same, was 20 years ago the same, and it will be in the future as well. This is from uh, from uh, European farms, and this is data from US. And uh, it is not about the, 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 the only numbers, but it's it's the same story. And you in even in Texas, you have uh, farmers who make a lot of money, and uh, his neighbor goes bankrupt. That's what's happening. What we uh, about the cow, the future cow. Uh, 
I already told you, I think genetically, uh, we will get, we were going to do uh, uh, steps again. Yeah, I know DSM, they are developing a feed that reduces the methane excretion uh, in the ratio. Uh, Merck improving fact science uh, and with all, all other things. And that's the development that goes on and that will help uh, the dairy industry. Animal welfare, Snorri told, uh, told you about that is, uh, it will become uh, important, uh, more important as well. Carbon footprint, big data, precision farming. Uh, I think in, in Western countries, it all, uh, we, we, we already have uh, very less antibiotic use that will spread out all over the world because the consumers, they don't want that. And um, that will go on. Conclusions. Um, and we have to strive to the highest standards. Uh, uh, we have to, everybody has to join, has to participate. The employees on the farm, the industry, consumers. Yeah, we have, it has to be teamwork. Um, yeah, feed, um, just milking, just feeding, just breeding is not long enough. Uh, we have to, uh, management has to improve. Uh, we have to be open-minded to the society, and so on, and so on. And it will maybe it will start in very developed countries, that, but it will go on as well. Be aware, take home messages. Be aware of consumer trends. Listen to the consumer. Uh, sustainability, uh, it's, it's, some farmers hate the word, but we have to manage it, we have to handle it. At our, uh, about different change, change on farm levels in the Netherlands, and I see it in more European countries, we can choose all kinds of milk change. Uh, very, uh, yeah, yeah, we have organic, we have uh, uh, all, uh, it's not organic, but it's almost organic. But you have, we, have also, we have also farmers who have everything inside and they just export for milk powder to Africa. That is basic, basic price, nothing extra. And I see a more a movement in that way. Marketing is important for us as farmers, for uh, cooperatives, to invest more and more in, uh, in marketing. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, I think we do all the same job. We do it in uh, uh, China, they're producing milk. And, uh, in the Netherlands, we're milking, uh, I'm milking cows every day on my farm. and. All the GDF farmers, they have their own business. Uh, they have to make money every day. And uh, we are not com competitors. We, uh, we can support each other. And I think there are so many opportunities uh, to cooperate uh, with Chinese farmers, with Chinese business partners, and uh, contact us, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ad. I think that's, those are very nice words to uh, end your presentation with. And um, I believe interesting thoughts as well to keep consumers in mind uh, when you're a farmer. So what do they want? Um, and of course, you said many other things and there was a lot of information. And for the audience, again, if you're interested in uh, having a, uh, the document of the presentation of Ad, uh, please contact us. I now would like to ask uh, Mr. Snorri to turn on his camera and his uh, microphone for a couple of questions uh, before we end this webinar. Uh, again, thank you both of you. Um, let's start with the first question. 
Uh, this question is for Snorri. So will there be large scale transnational dairy farms merging and acquisition in the future in China? That's a good, it's a good question. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, actually, today we have uh, some uh, multinational companies uh, working across borders uh, in Asia. And uh, we have also some big Chinese uh, companies uh, like uh, Modern Dairy and Fuyan Farms that also are operating uh, outside. And Fuyan has some operation in the States. Um, so we are seeing this uh, already uh, as a part of the big uh, uh, demand for uh, more milk in China. Uh, the companies are reaching out and the other companies are also reaching in. So uh, I'm quite con confident that uh, we will see more of those uh, big companies uh, operating many farms in different uh, different locations and different areas within China and also between the countries. Thank you very much, Nori. Very clear answer. Um, another question, um, the, but you mentioned uh, the challenge to feed the world. And actually it's a question for both Ad and Snorri, but maybe Ad can answer it at first. Do you believe um, to be able to feed the world, the population, we have to increase the number of cows? Uh, if you speak special about the number of cows, uh, you, you, you mentioned the number of cows. I th don't think it's necessary. Yeah? The scenarios for Europe are less cows and maybe uh, even uh, if the, the, milk, uh, the milk production will be uh, become uh, equal or maybe higher. But um, uh, the Netherlands export 70% of, of the dairy and I think um, we work in, we're living in a delta like Denmark like, uh, like, like Denmark like England, the northern part of Germany and I think uh, th th they can play a role in feeding the world and, and another thing I, I didn't mention in my presentation uh, you see parts in East Germany, which they're fighting against the drought. Uh, parts of France has problems with the, door, with the drought. The middle of Spain become a desert. So uh, I think we have to be proud on our uh, uh, dairy industry in Western part of, the, of, of Europe. Yeah. I, I can quickly follow up. I totally agree with, uh, with Ad on this. I don't think we need more cows. If you look at the Holstein cow today, uh, the, the genetics inside the cow, if you compare it to a car, it's like a car with five gears. And we are basically using three gears in the Holstein cow today. We have the DNA inside the cow to use it better. We can see it from farms, in, like I said, in, in, in the Netherlands, producing 60, 70 kilos per cow. And we see it also in Denmark, up to 80 or up to 90, 100 kilos per cow. Uh, so we are far from using the cow in a proper way. So I think we can uh, do much more than by, by uh, we don't need to add the cows. We just need to use them much better. Uh, and that's a lesson for all farmers all around the world that we can, we can do better to, to use the animals we already have. Uh, so I'm quite confident we will produce uh, enough milk for the future uh, generations of people on Earth. Thank you, Snorri. And I think your presentation is yeah, a fantastic example and, and guidance uh, yeah, to establish this with cleaner cows, um, better milk, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, people saw the presentation. <laughs> so very interesting. Thank you. I think um, because of the time, um, that's, this was the last question. For the audience, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact any of us. And then for now, I'm just gonna quickly share my screen again. And I would like to ask the audience to virtual raise your hand for our presenters, Brenda, Snorri and Ad. Um, again, very interesting topics. Thank you again for, for providing so much knowledge and um, 
I hope the audience enjoyed it as well as much as I did. So some final remarks. Um, again, questions. Um, you can either check our website um, uh, or send us an email. Uh, I guess all this information has, has, has brought up some, some uh, questions for you. And as a final thing, I would like to ask, uh, like to thank the organization FIF for providing this platform. Again, we're very proud that we're partners. And as a very last thing, I just want to show you uh, the conference we organized last year where Snorri was also one of our presenters. Uh, it was partially organized with uh, East Rock uh, in Beijing, China, uh, together with Artex Born Solutions. And uh, we're very proud of this Congress and, and the future ones as well. So uh, uh, keep uh, updated and uh, hopefully see you uh, next time. And hopefully uh, you'll all be joining at the trade show uh, in a couple of weeks from 5th. Bye bye. <laughs>